what causes crime. Let's see what general strain theory has to say. Robert Agnew's general strain theory argues that strain leads to negative emotions, which may lead to a number of outcomes, including delinquency. Any of the following can result in all kinds of crime. Rather than defining strain as the difference between our financial goals and our legitimate means to achieve those goals like Merton, Agnew stated that strain was caused by the difference between our aspirations towards any goal and the means to achieve that goal. According to Agnew, strain includes the failure to achieve positively valued goals like money, status, or respect, and autonomy, the removal of positively valued stimuli, such as the loss of a valued possession, not getting a promotion, or going through a breakup, and the presentation of negatively valued stimuli, such as physical abuse, harassment at work, homelessness. Agnew claimed that certain kinds of strains are more likely to lead to crime and deviance. First, strains that are perceived as unjust. Strains perceived to be unjust are likely to result in crime as they tend to result in anger. Anger, according to Agnew, is the negative affective state most conducive to criminal behavior because anger inhibits our ability to think rationally, often causing us to overlook alternative, rational, or peaceful means to resolve issues. Strains that are perceived as high in magnitude or intensity, that is, they're a big deal. The negative emotions generated by high magnitude strains are more difficult to cope with or to ignore or to deal with by legitimate behavioral means. Strains that create some incentive to engage in criminal coping. Agnew argued that certain subcultures react to strain in particular ways. So, for example, in the Enron scandal, the culture at Enron encouraged traders to engage in shady schemes and even rewarded them for doing so. And then strains that are associated with low social control. Strains that are related to low social control, such as overly permissive parenting, increase the likelihood of crime because they decrease our attachment to society. So if we perceive we have relatively little to risk by engaging in crime, we're more likely to do it. On the other hand, if we have high stakes in pro-social institutions, such as strong family relationships or good working relationships, we're less likely to choose criminal behavior as a source of coping because we fear losing the institutions or persons to which we are attached. So that's it. I hope you learned a lot. I'll see you next time.